had to have the same power of God, the same intelligence of God, and the same ability of God. So everything that was made was made by the word of God, the essence of God, the expression of God. But then John goes on to say something else. He says something else that is powerfully profound, and it underscores the point that I'm trying to make here in verse 14. John says then, he says that the word was made flesh. This essence of God, this exact representation of God, this agent of creation, the word was made flesh, John says. And the literal translation there is that, and the word became flesh and dwelt, tabernacled among us. And here's my point when I say that the word needs a container. Truth needs a container. So God wanted to contain his truth. And God wanted his person to be able to interact with human beings. The only way that God can interact with human beings on the human plane is that the word of God had to take on a container. It had to be contained in something. So John says, and the word became flesh. That God wrapped himself up in flesh, in the container of a flesh, so that God, the word of God, the essence of God, the exact representation of God, that then can then communicate and interact with men and women and boys and girls. And the word became flesh and dwelt, tabernacled is the original language, it's the literal translation. The word of God pitched a tent among us. In his earthly ministry, in his flesh, he was in a tent among us so the word of God can be contained. Are you following me? What did God do in the Old Testament? What did God do in his Shekinah glory, in his Shekinah presence? What did God do when he spoke to Moses? And what did God tell Moses to construct? A tent, a tabernacle. God had Moses to construct a tabernacle in the wilderness because God needed somewhere where he could meet with his people. And so God met with his people in the tabernacle. And the essence of God, the glory of God, was in the Holy of Holies, God's Shekinah glory. God's word needs a container. And in Christ, he became the container, the, the tent that the word of God will be contained in. Now follow this. This is, this is instructional. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, you will find that the same principle that John lays out in John chapter 1, Paul then applies that same principle in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. In verse 1, Paul said, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. We renounce the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now look at verse 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, speaking of creation, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And then verse 7, Paul says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So Paul, in trying to explain his ministry, he goes back to God and the creation through the agent of the word of God to create creation. And God said the same God whose glory shone in the face of Jesus Christ has now placed this treasure inside of us. So Paul says we now have this treasure in earthen vessels and the word for earthen vessels is translated from a word that means a clay pot. So Paul says that God has chosen to select the most expendable of the soils, clay. The cheapest of the soils, clay. God has chosen clay, us, human beings, and God has chosen to deposit the treasure of the word of God and the treasure of the gospel inside of us, clay pots. So Paul says that shows God's commitment to us, but it also shows that the excellency, that the power, that whatever is accomplished by the word of God ministering through us, it ain't from us. It is from God. 
that the glory might be to God, because in us dwells no good thing. The same idea that God needs a container for the treasure of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because angels are ministering spirits, they could not be the agents to contain the, the treasure of the gospel. And so it is sinners who have repented and put their faith in Jesus Christ. We then become the containers, the repositories of the truth of God. So in God's absence in the person of Christ and his ascension back to heaven, God then leaves behind his disciples, sends the Holy Spirit to fill them, and in succession we are filled by him so we become the containers that God uses to contain his truth. And that's why we need to come together because none of us by ourselves, we're not sufficient to contain the truth. We're not enough. To, we can't contain the truth of God's word. But all the truth that we need, God can give it to us through the individual members. So you got some of it. I got some of it. The pastor got some of it. We all got some of the truth, but none of us have the capacity to contain all of the truth. But together, we have more revelation than what we have individually or independently. Are you following me? That's why we need the church, so we can encounter truth. God chooses to place his truth in containers. The quintessential container was Jesus Christ. In him dwelt the fullness of all the Godhead in bodily form. But we're not Jesus Christ. We cannot have all the fullness of the Godhead, but we can have the truth that we need to live the Christian life. And through discipleship and relationships, we can have more truth that helps us become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. We need the church so that we can encounter more of the truth than we can encounter by ourselves. That's why we need the local church. And that's why it's important for us to come to church. Because God will give the Sunday school teacher something he didn't give you and you read the same book. You read the same lesson. But God might give you an insight that he didn't give to him or her. So by you sharing your collective insight and wisdom, you all have greater revelation and understanding, and you have a deeper grasp of the truth. We need the church so that we can encounter more of the truth of God. Point number two. Secondly, we need the church because truth requires a personality. Truth, God is a person. God has a personality. And in God, you have all of the wonderful attributes of God, holiness and mercy and righteousness and justice, the attributes of God, which makes him the perfect personality. So God's truth is always given and transmitted through personality. That, that legitimizes as being relevant, you see. The truth of God coming directly from God without a personality is too powerful for us to deal with. Remember in the Old Testament? Moses would go to the mountain and he'd be in the presence of God. And then when he came back, he was so overwhelmed by the glory of God, he put a veil on his face because the people couldn't stand to look at the unveiled glory of God. It was just too powerful. Jesus Christ was veiled. He had to be veiled in human flesh because if God had not put human flesh upon him, the power of his glory would have been too awesome. People couldn't have stood to be in his presence. Now, we'll support that. When he goes to the mountain of transfiguration, on the mountain of transfiguration, the glory that's inside of him comes out of him. And the Bible said he is transcendent with such glory and he's so effervescent and so powerful, they say it's like nothing they've ever seen before. Now, if he'd been walking around like that, glowing like that, people would have been scared to death of him, but he veils it in human flesh. So he looks like an ordinary man walking the streets of Palestine. And the word of God comes through a personality of Christ. So Christ's personality had been shaped for those 33 years when he was living there in Israel. He was shaped by his mother and shaped by his father, so his words came through a personality, a personality that sounded somewhat human, yet it was divine in how profoundly powerful it was. Are you following me? 
So truth needs a personality.